to bring to the show my big cuz, Dr. Christopher Pugh, physical and occupational therapist. Uh, welcome to the Golden Boot, Chris. Nice to have you on. Thank you. Appreciate having me, man. Appreciate it. Uh, and he's repping his uh, DU dealer. Uh, Chris is the reason why I didn't graduate on time. He had me in New Orleans <laughs> every other weekend. Uh, <laughs> can't put that on me because I, I, I came out in four years. I can't put that one on me. I know. I was there helping you study. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll say that. We'll go with that. <laughs> but now, Dr. Christopher Pugh, uh, would you rather us call you Doc uh, or Chris? Chris yeah, cool, I want to call you Doctor. Yeah. Nah, Chris is cool, man. Chris is cool. Hey, by the way, my back hurting. I hate you up late. I need a prescription. But uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, so but but thank you for coming on. Uh, we did. Uh, I talked to you Friday. We were talking, kind of talking about this, and I was like, hey, man, you know, come on, talk to us about you know saying concussions and stuff. We all saw Thursday night. We were actually live on the show when Tua got his second concussion in four days. Um, well. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> so the Dolphins, according to the Dolphins, it was uh, the one against uh, Buffalo was a back and ankle uh, uh, injury. So, yeah, take that as you will. But let me ask you this. Let me start off this first. Uh, let me ask you as far as, as so people can understand and, and why we, you know what I'm saying, brought you on. As a physical and occupational therapist, what exactly is it that you, you know what I'm saying, that you do? So basically, being a physical therapist and an occupational therapist, physical therapists, we're movement specialists. Our schooling teaches us how people move and everything associated with it, which is, you know, the, bus the muscles, the bones, the nerves, basically how they interact with each other, basically looking for things to help people get back to their everyday function. Just like you have these athletes who get injured, our goal is to get them back to their function, rehab them so they can basically be at that baseline or even better. So that's our goal with everything. Occupational therapy is the same thing. Trying to get people back to what we call their activities of daily living. Things that they do on a daily basis to take care of their families, take care of themselves. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, so we all here, especially in football, uh, football world, um, concussion, concussion, concussion. Um, what exactly is a concussion? Well, I mean, concussion realistically is a brain injury. It's a, it's a mild brain injury. So it basically happens with somebody has a blow to the head or if their head shakes repeatedly, basically the, the brain hitting the skull. So it's kind of like the, the brain is getting bruised to, to kind of put it in its more, more simplest terms. Um, you know, a lot of times doctors, they don't treat concussions. Um, they say mild brain injury just because it's usually not life threatening. Um, overall, but um, basically at the end of the day, it's truly the brain getting bruised by either a, a, a blow to the head or the head, the brain actually hitting the skull. Chris, let me let me also ask you this. So when you're saying it's getting bruised, is this something that heals over time or is this something to where it's like it lasts? You know? So it heals, over, it heals over time, man. You know, one thing people don't realize, the, the human body is amazing. It heals itself. You know, we, we kind of like Wolverine off of X-Men. We, we heal ourselves a lot of time, and the body does a lot of things to compensate. You know, so, you know, over time, those brain cells, they heal. You know, um, as they say, you know, a lot of people say, oh, when you drink alcohol, you're losing brain cells. We have a lot of brain cells, and a lot of them continue to, you know, rejuvenate themselves. However, it Is does that take true? a little time. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Uh, I got, I got a question for you. Uh, um... <laughs> There was a there was a, a boxer in South America who passed away a few days after you know getting knocked out in a fight. Uh, so when we talk about you know head injuries and stuff like that, how long after you sustain that head injury is there is there like a window of when okay well now you're okay you know after you receive a head injury? So it's really based on symptoms. Everybody's different. No head no head traumas no concussions are the same. Unfortunately, um, I I heard a. Uh, the young lady on ESPN today, uh, Stefania Bell. Yeah. I, I won't know how she got her job. I'd love to be in her place, but <laughs> she talked about it. They're kind of like snowflakes, you know, no snowflake are the same. And it's, it's true, you know, with concussions, everybody's symptoms are different. So it's very symptom based. So depending on the severity, you have some people who might be out literally a week and they're right back. You have some people, they might be out a month or a couple months. I've, I've seen patients or I've heard of patients who 
but not as long as three months from a concussion. Mm. But again, it was a pretty severe one. So they have still a lot of those symptoms that they just can't function. Does 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 it like being a, having multiple, you know, being successful, like if you've had five, six, does it take you longer to recover at that point? Yes, it does. So you're basically you're basically repeating you're having a, a repeat injury to the same area and sometimes areas around it. So it will take a lot longer to heal. You have some people, unfortunately, their symptoms continue to get worse because of those repeat concussions. Um, so the body doesn't just bounce back as fast from it. Um, a lot of people, I think that's why we they, they kind of put a time, kind of put a stamp of for us how many our individuals had to, to determine kind of where they should fall with the protocols with concussions. And that's why, you know, concussions become such a hot topic because more and more research is coming out about it. You know, just like with Alzheimer's and everything that's dealing with neuro, neurosciences, you have a lot of individuals, they know more now. So the more they know, the more they're able to categorize it and try to figure out ways to, you know, safely return people. Yeah, that, I think that goes to one of the questions I had. Is it a rise in the number of concussion or is it just better understanding that, hey, a concussion has occurred? Better understand it. I mean, just like with anything over time, especially in the sports arena, if we all know, you know, think about just genetics in general. These athletes are getting bigger, faster, just genetically over time. Like, these guys who are in high school today look like grown men. And I remember when I was in high school, we had one or two of those, but now you're seeing a whole team that looks like that. So the things you think about that, just with the development of genetics, but also with the development of knowledge in sports sciences, you have individuals who they're researching these concussions because they want to get these individuals back to the plane as soon as possible. Just like with training, you have people in middle school who have trainers. So, you know, from a sports performance standpoint, they're learning how to be more explosive. They're learning how to be, you know, quicker. They're learning how to be stronger, you know, and it's, it's just, again, evolution. Hmm. All right. Um, well, I have one. Go ahead, man. So, of course, you, you kind of explain to us what a concussion is. Like, what are the symptoms of concussion? You know what I'm saying? Because especially we have high school players, college players who may not have 10 athletic trainers. And, you know, what does it look like? Yeah, so it, it, it varies. Again, symptom based based on the person. A lot of times you'll have people who have a light sensitivity. Um, headache is the really most common one. Individuals, you know, as you see, a lot of them shake their head when they first get up, like they say, shaking the cobwebs out. They're literally trying to orient themselves. Uh, you have some people who have nausea, vomiting, uh, blurred vision where they're seeing double. Uh, and then, you know, you have some also uh, people who unfortunately have seizures, you know, following them as well. So it, it, it literally varies the severity um, based on the individual and the person. But, you know, those are the most common signs and symptoms that you see. And like you said, it's, it's hard to determine. And sometimes People can have one so mild they don't even realize they had one. You know. Right. Uh, so when after you've been diagnosed with a concussion, I know most of the time, you know, they tell you don't go to sleep, you know, stay away from lights, TV, you know, all that kind of stuff. Were you surprised when you saw that not only did Tua fly back with the the team that night, that he watched a movie with his coach of all people on the flight? Like that seems to me like the worst thing you can do following a head injury. Well, I feel like the worst thing you could do is not recognizing the first one. The first place mm -hmm. against Buffalo. Mm -hmm. I mean, anybody watching it, I mean, I, I was watching the game live and saw this gentleman get up and literally shake his head, take some steps, and literally collapse. Yeah. And to say ankle and back, I've had back spasms. I know individuals have them. They can hurt, but to literally almost put you face down. Yeah. Oh. I, I had a guy at <laughs> a high school game Friday night. Talk about that. And he said, I, he said, man, listen, I've had back problems. He said, I hunch over. I don't stumble and fall. Yeah, so. exactly. Now, he, did exactly. Have a play, he did have a play where he got kind of folded up and, you know, he was slow to get up and he was hunched over on that play and that he mm -hmm. might have hurt his back on. But the play you're talking about where he shook off the cobwebs and then took a few steps, fell, his lineman helped him up, took a few more steps, and then they literally had to hold him up in the huddle. I don't, I don't see how you can say that's anything but a concussion. Exactly, exactly. I mean, but the, the, the thing with him, though, I mean, honestly, there was a lot of red flags just hearing it. I mean, being a medical fan, I've been a therapist almost 15 years now. I went through a fellowship training program where I'm uh, certified uh, in orthopedic manual therapy. 
Um, I'm not an expert in concussions, but we do get a lot of knowledge on them and also plan extending my knowledge, but even talking to other therapists and people in that field, it, it just don't make sense. You know, with all these medical vibes, it just doesn't make sense. The, the risk that you're putting on this individual, one, letting them play. Two, that you caught him off. But the fact that he got discharged the same night in the neck brace and was mm-hmm. able to fly. Uh, I think Stephen A. or um, it might have been, um, I can't remember, Marcus Spears actually was talking about it. Think about when you fly the cabin pressure that you feel mm-hmm. in your head sometimes yeah. and when you're chewing right. dumb. Right. You have a headache just from flying normally, but to have a concussion on top of it, I mean, I just couldn't imagine putting someone through that. So, you know, I think just certain steps would definitely miss. That's why I think you're seeing the firing of the mm-hmm. in the, the you know unaffiliated neurologist. But even with that, I still think it was it was definitely more of a pull on the Dolphins organization, probably saying, "Hey, you know, we, we need to make sure we get him." back to Miami uh, versus being at the University of Cincinnati Hospital. But a lot of things seem to be red flags, in my opinion. Yeah. All right. Because let me ask you this real quick. Um, protocols. There are protocols in place. So it's supposed to prevent this from happening, him going back on the field. Uh, in the same game, the Buffalo game, also supposed to be protocols throughout the week um, that are supposed to be activated by an outside source or whatever. Um, Obviously, that didn't happen. Um, we see that in in, in response, uh, the PA, the Players Association, basically made the Dolphins fire that that, that doctor. Um, how how are these how are these protocols missed? Because I mean, I, I'm not saying that they didn't go through them, but how are protocols like this missed? Or, or, or... so it's kind of hard to speak to that just because I don't know what aspects they say he passed. Yeah. So, you know, that, that'd be something, you know, if they release that would give us a better idea. But, um, I mean, typically, if individuals have a concussion, they ask you questions. They ask you a serious question. They, ask, they try to see if you're alert and oriented, um, you know, kind of where you're located, your name, you know, um, what time is it, you know, just different questions to make sure you're alert and oriented. Some of those things, you can definitely make it through. Um a lot of it is the coordination components. Because sometimes, just like the thing about with boxing, when a referee grabs the hands and pulls the individual towards them and tries to see basically, can they stand up on them all on their own? And can they, you know, resist me or basically follow my commands? <clears throat> if they can't, they call the fight. And you know, a lot of it's the coordination, the instability from that standpoint. You know, I don't honestly don't know how you pass those 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 protocols, but again, it's so individualized and symptom based based on the individual you know I, based on how he demonstrated on fit i don't see how his helmet was not taken away um and how anything was missed to allow him to finish the buffalo game and on top of playing the following game yeah yeah let me ask you um so i, I know we're talking about tour but i have a quick question about antonio brown um of course, we know Antonio Brown has been doing some crazy things over the last couple of years. But, you know, I've, I've watched some in, earlier interviews of him before he took the hit by, uh, I think it's Bur- Burfitt. Yeah, yeah. Burfitt. And you can tell there's a slight difference in who this guy is now and before he took that hit. I mean, can you speak on that possibly? <laughs> well, some of us probably ego. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but. I, I, I understand where you're coming from. One of the things individuals don't realize, and it's a real thing, is the CTE. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's real. Um, you know, I think the, the movie that Will Smith had that brought so much light to it that unfortunately put a negative light on the NFL, it is truly real. This is something that's ongoing. You got individuals who continue to get these brain injuries or these concussions and it leads to long-term damage and it leads to personality changes as well just like individuals who might have a loved one that suffers from dementia or alzheimer you start seeing a shift of who that person is at some point and you know to the point where you like sums up this is not them normally and you know i think he might be showing some signs you know can i prove it can we prove it no but i mean like you said look at interviews from him in the past and look at him now it's He's definitely doing some some wild things, um, you know. Uh, but again, 
a lot of it is, you know, they have to test. Them. You know, they do do the baseline test of all the NFL players. Now, this is kind of some new. They, they started doing those over the past couple of years to see where they are baseline at the beginning of the season. I think they do the repeat testing on that. But, you know, it's even some schools, um, even down to the high school level, that have started doing that as well. Um, I, I, I live in Atlanta now, but I moved here from Texas, Dallas area. You know football, huge in Texas. You know, it's a million-dollar stadium, so they they have a lot of resources. But, you know, you have a lot of kids who have to go through and get concussion tested prior to the season start, right. you know, just to get an idea of what their baseline is. And I say to say this, the CT component of it is something that I think, you know, people that they know they risk when they go to play the game, but at the same time, that doesn't mean, you know, it's still not a bad thing. And I know the game is definitely evolving and they're doing things for the safety force, the new helmets. You see the uh, padding that they put on the helmets and practice for to help <laughs> prevent some of the blows. But Again, people will continue to get bigger, faster, stronger in their performance. And it's, it's physics, <laughs> you know, it's if, physics. If I could also say to this too, a lot of times whenever people refer to CTE, it's always on the NFL level. I mean, it's the, I, honestly, of course, I don't have anything to prove it, but I think this probably can affect high school, college players also. Uh, if you look right. at uh, a brain injury is a brain injury. Right. Uh, exactly. uh, what age right. was? Aaron Hernandez, they said, was one of the most severe cases, mm -hmm. um, and he hadn't been in the league all that long. So you got to imagine all the stuff that he was alleged to have done, um, I, and, and also the with the the, the brain, the tests and stuff. Uh, before you deploy, they did they did one before I deployed. They did one on us, and then when we got back, they did one as well. So they, I mean, just think about it this way too. Football unrelated. Think about it. you got somebody who comes from a rough past and a rough childhood, and they they fall all their life. Yeah. You get in a bunch of fights, and you take a couple blows, and even potentially get knocked out once or twice. Those are some those concussions. Those are brain injuries. Yeah. So if you got that on top of football itself, yeah. you definitely set yourself up uh, potentially have those brain injuries and some long term effects. Yeah, that's a good point. Hey, all right. So I know we're talking about concussions and head injuries, but. As you know, in your job, you do more than just concussions. So I want to ask you about another injury that's that's kind of near and dear to our hearts down here in uh, Louisiana. But Jameis Winston has four four uh, fractures in his back, and he attempted to play with that. Um, what what is a typical like timeline for an injury like that? And um, do you think that he will be a hundred percent healthy this season, or is that something that's going to linger for you know for, for a while? So, 100% healthy for the season, though, just because the season, typically full healing takes around 12 weeks total. So, depending on when he sustained the fractures. The other part of it that you have to think about and consider is even with rehab, the way the body heals is rest as well. Yeah. If you're in a season, yeah. that body's not resting. Yeah. You're still getting hit. You know, yeah. I mean, and as fortunately, I hate to say it about my Saints, but <laughs> They haven't been protecting him too well either. That's <laughs> so true. That's true. Them, That's true. Them, them hits he's taking is not, you know, not helping at all. So, um, one hundred percent no, but definitely can recover from it. One of the things, you know, he he is young, you know, but unfortunately, like over his career, he's taken some hits. I mean, his time in Tampa, um, he take he took quite a bit of hits. So, you know, he he's going to need some time to rehab. But as we all know, Jameis is. Surprised a lot of people from a rehab standpoint, you know, watching I've gotten to watch some of his uh, rehabs with his knee and watching him, you know, in the off season, the, the man puts in work. He puts in work to get himself where he needs to be to perform. Um, and I, I hate to hear, you know, see that happen for him because I really had high expectations for him this season because, you know, like I said, he puts in the work. But again, a fracture, especially in the spine. It, you know, you're dealing with stability issues. It could lead to issues with him having nerve pain down the legs um, or also in the upper extremity based on where it's located in the spine. So it can even affect him, you know, with running or the grip of the football. So a lot of things definitely that can play a part with it, they have to really, you know, have good precautions around it. So do you, do you, do you think he shouldn't have played the last two uh, couple games once he got the fracture? Yeah. I, I, I don't think so because just his future. But again, he he's been out this long. He wants to play. Yeah, he yeah. wants to basically was... prove that the next day is wrong. He wants to be able to, you know, lead his team to have that playoff run and potentially be Super Bowl contender, especially with the pieces that they add. 
you know, with from the draft and, the, um, you know, Jarvis Landry. And then, you know, you got Tyron on the defensive side. I mean, you, you're putting a team together to make that run. So, again, he wants to be a part of it. And I get it. You know, as a, you know, people who play sports, they want to be in the game. They don't want to be sitting on the sideline cheering for their team. So, yeah. Yeah, All but right. at the same time, I mean, if he if, if he's not gonna be able to walk in ten years, like, oh, yeah. yeah, unfortunately, quarterbacks, athletes, yeah. short term memory, they don't yeah. think about that that long term effects, you know. Exactly. Unfortunately, right. yeah. that's why but, they need people to protect them from themselves. That's right. That's true. Bingo. Bingo. Real safe. Um, let's let's get back to um the concussion real quick. This is the last like as far as concussion that I have. Um, how do you usually treat as a, a physical therapist, how do you, or, or, you know, how do you treat concussions, uh, or how do you recommend concussions be treated, and um, the average time of recovery? So again, average time is honestly specific on the yeah. individual. Okay. Um, you know, it could be anywhere from probably a couple weeks um, to a month to a couple months. Um, you have some people who bounce back within a week. As far as treatment, treatment is truly based on graded activity. And when I say graded activity, that means let's say what they have to do and what their end goal is. You want to grade them up to it. So if they have to be able to run 100 yards, you start with them being able to run five yards. Then you grade it up to 10. Then you grade. You keep adding to see how they respond. You know, are they having any symptoms? Or does any of the activities elicit symptoms? A lot of times concussions um, go hand in hand with coordination drills. So they'll probably have them doing different things with their coordination, balance activities. Um, one of the things too is just getting some of the, the sensitivities such as the light sensitivity to calm down. Um, you have some clinics that when they treat concussions, they might have an individual wearing sunglasses or they might have, you know, the, the area that they're treating and have a very dim light. So they don't have the, the issues with the light sensitivity. So the, the usually most individuals are basically done through a graded activity. So they will have a aerobic component to it where they have to do running like on the treadmill or on a bike, anything to kind of get their heart rate going because, again, it, it kind of causes that physiological response. So with that being said, they're trying to see, does it elicit symptoms? How bad are the symptoms? Are the symptoms improving? And they continue to grade and bump them up a little bit more with these treatment based on how they responded. Man, cuz I appreciate you coming through. Doc Dr. Chris. Uh <laughs> no problem, man. Uh, that Dillard education, that St. Augustine education coming through. We appreciate it. Uh <laughs> hey, uh, I want to say shout out. Uh let's go ahead and get them all these student loans forgiven. I know that'll help Please everybody do. out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh I appreciate it, cuz thank you for coming through. Uh is there anything else? Um uh, I guess from from a that you know you might want to promote or or say or, or health wise you might want to tell us you know what I'm saying for our better uh, betterment of, of our health. No nah, man, I mean biggest thing is as we all know breast cancer awareness month. So definitely make sure the women that you love make sure that they're taking care of themselves and catching those signs. We just finished prostate cancer awareness month in September. My dad is a prostate cancer survivor, going on eleven years now, and actually had early detection, which he had surgery on my, the the last semester of my graduate school, or I had to take my final exam, which was the most stressful day of my life to hear my dad's having surgery on to remove the cancer. So we'll say God is great, but the biggest thing is, man, it's the most preventive, preventative cancer. Guys, you know, make sure if it runs in your family, you know, have your annual physicals, pay attention to your symptoms because Unfortunately, especially as black men, we don't have to die from prostate cancer if we detect it early enough. So, you know, when, when, when should we start getting checked for that, honestly? So, you know, usually they say if you have a family history, you should be starting as early as potentially 40 years old. Um, but, you know, I would definitely say consult with your, your primary care physician. Um, but, you know, if, if you don't have a family history, some people say 45 or even 50 years old. But, you know, again, it's it's pretty prevalent within men and especially African-American men. Um, I, I was just talking to someone who their uncle literally has prostate cancer, but he ignored the signs, has a history in his family, and now he's got a cancer that he potentially could pass away from that could have been prevented. Wow. So, 
So wow. that's the biggest thing. Just take care of your loved ones. Take care of yourself, man. Always, you know, be looking out for each other. Well, I got we got. Okay, can I ask you a quick I question? Got a question. Yes, sir. All right, real quick. Okay, so I, I I had a question. So we're in Louisiana, right? I'm in South Louisiana. People down here love to drink. So quick question. In a shot, how many brain cells you lose per shot? Well, this dude right here, man. I, I, I can't tell you that answer. I don't know. I don't know at all, man. Hold on. I went, uh, to, co- I guess, I went to college uh, in New Orleans, so I can't say. It, it. Depend, it depends on hold on, hold on, what hold you're on. taking I'm, a shot of. Okay. No, not just that. Uh, Chris, can you explain that you have to have them first to lose them? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's a true statement, too. That's a true statement. <laughs> All right, Chris. I mean, Chris, uh, honey bun, Chris, what you, wow. what you got? That's you, Chris? Hey, Dr. Honey Dr. Chris, Chris? Chris, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I was, was going to ask you because uh, – I was just wondering how it feels to be a doctor, Chris, since I'm regular. But on the other hand, when you was getting ready to go to college and finish, like, are one of y'all requirements is to be in shape? Like, do to be a physical therapist, do you have to be in shape? Because I've never seen no. one out of shape. I have. Okay. <laughs> no, it is it's not. But you have to think about it. You you do need to try to be in some form of physical fitness, just because if you're trying to promote healthy living to your patients. Are they really gonna take advice from you when you're not looking <laughs> healthy to them? So that's something you have to kind of keep in keep in mind. Just like even with patients, we always talk. We don't tell patients or have them do exercises that we can't physically do either. Because again, you know, they're looking for you as an example. So I would, but I'd say there's some some ones that are not in top top shape. I'm not in the best of shape myself. I need to get back in the gym like I used to be, but. You know, kids, family, all that stuff. But I do want to say though, y'all done a great job, man. Uh, I, I'm very proud of this podcast, especially my cousin here. He when he told me that y'all were doing this, and I'm glad it's taking definitely some set, taking sales and taking win. Because I mean, y'all, y'all, y'all hilarious. Y'all have some good content. Y'all think feed off each other really well, man. And especially, I love to see us, you know, doing something well, especially giving out some positive vibes. So keep up the great work, man. Yeah, right. thank you, we appreciate you. Hey, love yeah. you. Appreciate you, cuz. Thank uh, you, too, bro. All right, man. And uh, everybody, that was Dr. Christopher Pugh, uh, physical and occupational therapist.